Mr. G? Mr. Hello? G? Uh, I think we're ready for you. Yes, can you? All right, okay, start. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Python coding day two now. So we're on lesson two. So before we can go on any further, uh, let's have a little recap of what we have done so far. So with the yesterday's lesson on Python programming, we've learned how to use the print function. The print function, which allows us to display information to the on screen, or in our case, in our Python shell. We've also done the input function, which allows us to get answers from a person when they are using our program, because sometimes we don't want our programs to be static, we want it to become dynamic where the people that's using our program can enter information for us to use. Then we went on to, okay, what if we are working with numbers and we want to display an answer? We learned that you can convert the answer to a string. That's where we learned the string X, the X stands for whatever value or variable you want to convert. So the string X, this allows us to convert the value inside the brackets to a string value. In our case, text. Because remember when we using the print function, we can either display text only, or we can display a calculation only. We cannot display two different types of information at the same time. In order to do this, we actually need to make sure that everything is the same type. So then we also learned that if we are going to use the input box to get values from the person, that means numbers now, not just text, we have to use the int round brackets x that allows us to convert the text into a value that we can actually calc use a calculation with. So the int function can be used with the input box as well. Now, while we are on that, if I look at the number results, for those of y'all that actually went or actually tried to do the programs yesterday and succeeded, congratulations, good work. Those of y'all that tried to do the work but failed at it slightly, don't worry, we're still learning. So you will get there eventually. So I asked y'all to create a little maths program to see if you can add, subtract, multiply, and divide numbers. So if we, I'm just gonna open up my Python module. So sorry, I'm having a bit of trouble with the Python module. Okay. So if I open up a Python module, it opened up three times, All right. And I can now go and open up the program I asked to create. So I'm going to go open and I'm going to open up to the area that I have my work. And let's go with the addition. Now the addition we did yesterday, this is slightly different. So if I open it up you'll notice that I've got the number one and I'm using the input box to enter in the number one. Remember when we use the input box, the information that's going to come from the user when they enter information will be text. So what's happening is if they enter five, five will be stored in number one. It's always what's on the right hand side is being stored on the left hand side whenever we use an equal to sign. The equal to sign is also mentioned as the assignment statement, something you assign in. So it's always right is being stored on left. Okay, so the input box is storing our text in number one. When we ask for the second number, it's been stored in number two. Now, when I did this yesterday, I did it slightly different. So when I worked out the answer of adding up the two numbers, I said, okay, 
the result is going to be number one plus number two. But if you noticed, I said it's just not number one plus number two, it's actually int number one plus int number two. Why I did this is because if you can remember that the input box gives you text. So if the input box gives you text and I want to do a calculation, I need to make sure that the calculation is a value and that value is what I'm going to be calculating. So I convert the number one that's been entered on the top into integer and I convert the number two that's been entered on the top here into integer. So I get number one plus number two and I finally go print number one plus number two is equal to string result. The reason I'm going string result is because this is now a calculation. I'm taking one number plus another number. And when you add two numbers together, you're going to get a number. But when we display information, I, I can only display one type of information. So I need to decide, am I going to display it as a text or am I going to display it as a number? And since I'm putting a message to the person that's going to see it, I said, it has to all be text. And if I look at it, number one is text. Number two is text. But the result, result here is a integer because I'm saying, int number one, I'm converting the text into an integer. I'm saying int number two, I'm converting the number into an integer. So that's the reason why I said string result and not string num one and num two because num one and num two are already string. So I can quickly run this and it'll ask me for the first number. I'm gonna go 12 and, oh, well, let's go 13 and 14. You can see 13 plus 14 is 27. See, I've entered the as text but it gave me the answer as an integer. Now I'll ask you to do the same thing for subtraction, division, and multiplication. Now if I look at the subtraction one, it's basically the same thing. The only difference now is that instead of addition, I'm now doing subtraction. And that's what I change on the inside as well. When I open up multiplication, you'll notice that it's the same thing again. Again, the only thing that's changing is now from subtraction, I put it as multiplication. And finally, division. And if I look at it, exactly the same thing. Now you may be saying, but then I could have just copied and pasted the code and just changed one item. And that is correct, that's what I've done. I've just copied the entire lines of code and I pasted it in a new file and I changed one thing of the, of the program. Well, in this case, it was actually two things, so one and two. So that's what we had to do for addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. Now, I said, okay, I wanna show you the types of values you can get. So what I did was I decided to put it all as one program. So I'm just gonna open up that one program for you. File open. And here's the program. I ask the user to input the first number and I stored it in num1. Num1 is the variable that's been created for me. Delph, sorry, Python is creating that variable for you. Then I am storing the second number in num2. Now these two are text because there was no conversion in front of input. If you notice, I just copied the other two lines from each of the programs and I put it in here. So now if I run this, let me just clear off this console. 
All right, so now if I run it and I enter in my two numbers, I can put any two numbers, 23 and seven. You'll see that 23 plus seven is 30, correct? 23 minus seven is 16. 23 times seven is 161. But here's a slight difference. 23 divided by seven is 3.285714 continuing. But you'll notice that this number is different from the top three. If you understood your numbers in maths, you know that we have different types of number systems. We have integers, reals, unreal numbers. Now, the first three are integer numbers. The last number is a real number, a number that includes decimals. And why is this important? Because now you can see that we can also add and subtract decimal numbers. It just doesn't have to be integers. But the problem occurs if I try to enter a number that's real in this program, it's going to tell me that I am giving it a problem. So if I go 2.3 as my first number and seven as my second number, the Python program is gonna say, all right, we've got a problem now. And the problem is you are you or we are using int to convert 2.3. Now, if we remember, int round brackets converts the text that we give it into an integer. But 2.3 is not an integer, it is a real number. So what we need to do is if we are using multiplication, division, and subtraction for real numbers, we need to convert or have a conversion to convert the number into real. And there is a conversion for real. The conversion for real is what we call float. And we'll come to that just now. So we've got different numbers in Python or different types of numbers in Python, just like we got in maths. And the number results or the number results table here will show you what type of answer will you get at the end when you want to use number? Sorry. So if I take an integer number and I add, subtract, multiply another integer, so I can do any of the operators as long as there are two integers, I will get an integer number. If I decide to take an integer number, and I divide it by another integer number, I'm going to get a real answer. So I need to make sure that I can store that real answer somewhere. Same with integer. If I decide to use any of the operators and I have a real, I'll get a real answer. If I get a real, any of the operators, another real number, it'll be real. Uh, this looks similar to the addition and subtraction multiplication table you got, where you got two negatives, two positives, and so on. Now, the same thing applies for the numbers, right? So the data types, this brings us to, remember, I've only done two data types with you all so far, which are string and integer. So string means any text. That means it can be a combination of numbers and letters, or it can be special characters, any type of text. That is what we refer to as string. Then we have integers. Integers are whole numbers which are both positive and negative. So it's your counting numbers, right? Where you can count positive and negatively. Then we have float. Float is that new type that we're gonna to do today, which is your real numbers, numbers that have decimals. So whenever we refer to a real number, we'll be referring to it as a float number. Float means floating point. It has a decimal at the end. And of course, the fourth one is a Boolean data type. Boolean data type, that is a variable that we can create that can only store one of two answers. It can either store a true answer or a false answer. We'll get into that a bit later on. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the float function. So if we look at the built-in functions that we did so far, print, input, string, and int, here's float. So how do we use float? We say float 
so round brackets and inside the round brackets, we put down what must we convert to a float. And this converts the value on the inside to a real number. So if I go back to my program now, I can now use real numbers for addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division by simply saying, instead of it being an integer, I can say, let's make it a float. And you must be saying, but then we could have just done that at the start. Why use integers? Because if we look at integers, integers are whole numbers. Floats will always have a decimal. And in some calculations, having a decimal doesn't make sense. It's like if I ask you if there's three people at a party and you want two of them to leave, how many you got left? You're left with one. Can't be a one and a half person that's left over, right? So that's why we sometimes only use integers. So it's important to understand when to use integers and when to use reals. Relation as well as in integers, I can simply change all the integers into floats. So I'm simply going to go change all the integers into floats. So this will convert the text that we received on the top into floats. And that's our program done. And this now will run real numbers. So I can now go 2.3 and I can go 7. And now it'll give me answers. 9.3 minus 4.7, 16.099 recurring, 0 0.3285 continuing. So now we learned how to use real numbers. Next, you'll notice that the last built-in function that we can or we'll use currently is the round function. The round function allows us to round off a number to either a integer value or in our second case by adding on one extra bit of code to how many decimals we want. And I'll show you this using an example. All right, so I'm just quickly going to start a new Python shell. File new. I'm going to run a simple program. I'm going to go file, save. I'm going to call this round off. Now again, please don't worry about trying to follow on with me at the same time. If you cannot, the videos will be uploaded and it is uploaded, and I'll give you the link to the YouTube site if you didn't find it already. So I'll go round off. So I'm going to type out, okay? Number one is equal to three, four. Number two is equal to seven. And I'm quickly going to just display the answer if I divide the numbers. So I'm going to go print. number one divided by number two. One. When it runs, gives me an answer of 4.857. Now I chose a number that would give me a nice long decimal. The reason for this is I can show you how to use the round function. And when we use the round function, we can either use it in the print statement, so I can go print round and do the calculation. Or I can store the calculation first and then round it. Now, the more information you put on a single line, the more complex your code looks. So that's why we normally write it out as multiple steps. So I'm going to go result is equal to number one divided by number two. 
we know the answer is 4.857. So now we can say, okay, let's round this answer off. So round the result. I get five, 4.8. Eight, five, if I don't tell them how many decimals, it'll round it off to an integer. So now I've got an integer number. Next, you may be saying, but result is not the same as number one and number two on the top, but it is, it's doing the same calculation. In fact, I can prove it to you. I can cut off the information from there and I can put it in a line above it and just work with the result. And we'll get the same answer from before. There we go, same answer from before. Now, as I said before, result, so oh, sorry, round can be used in two ways. You can just round off the number, which just rounds the number off to the nearest integer, of course. And we have round the value and how many decimals. So I can now go and say, okay, what if I wanted to round the number off to two decimal places? Now I've already got the code here, so I'm just gonna copy it and paste it. And I'm gonna say, okay, but this time I want it to two decimal places. So if I click run and run the module, oh, I said 0.2 instead of comma two, so, right? Now I've got two decimal places. Remember when we round off to two decimal places, the computer is gonna look at the third digit. If the third digit is bigger than or equal to five, then the number in front rounds off. So that's why the five became a six. And now this can be applied to any number of digits. You don't only have to put two, I can go four digits and it'll still work. It'll just give me four digits in my display. Hope you're following. Right. So that's how our round function would work. Now, we don't, own, there are many other built-in functions, but for the time being, we're just gonna focus on those few that, for now because it's the maths one. Now we're gonna look at some other maths type of operators. So if I look at the maths operators, let me just close this. Before I close it, let me just new file. All right, so if we look at the different types of maths operators, we will learn that if I wanted to multiply two numbers, it's the multiplication, but if I wanted to take a number and raise it to another number, as in two square, three square, four to the power of five, I can use what we call a double multiplication. So if it's a double multiplication, what this does, it says it's not just multiplication, it's actually a power. So it's four to the power two. Let's have a run this module. four to the power two is 16 because four times four is 16. So we can use a double multiplication to use as power. But then trying to remember this all the time, you can forget. So there must be an easier way to do some maths functions. So this was just squaring the number to the power two. What if I want to square root the number? What if I wanted to round the number up or round the number down? How would I do all this? Now, there is a module in Delphi. Sorry, Python, sorry about that. There's a module in Python that, allow, that is created for us to use that we can actually use functions like square root, round up and round down, but it's not called round up and round down. And before we can actually use this module in Python, what we need to tell the computer is that we want to use something that it doesn't currently have in its program. And what we do, yes, is we say we want 
to take something from the math class, the math module. It's called the math module. And what we want to take from the math class, star or asterisk. What this means, from the math module, I'm going to take everything. I'm going to bring in everything. Import means to bring in. So I'm going to bring in everything. I can choose what, what I want, but just for the time being or to save time, I'm going to say I'm going to bring in everything. And now I'm allowed to use the math class or the math module. And when I use the math module, these are the parts of that math module that we're going to be using. I've already showed you the import statement. And what we'll be using is the SIL function. The SIL fun function rounds the number up to the nearest integer. So what this does is if you say the number is 6.2, it'll give you seven. It's going to round the number up. Then we have the floor function. The floor function rounds the number down to the nearest integer. So if you go with 4.9, 4.9 will be four rounding downwards. Then we've got square root, SQRT. Square SQRT means square root. This will square root the number. So if we go square root of 16, square root of 16 is four. And finally, we've got the power function. The power function is the double asterisk that I showed you. But instead of just saying double asterisk, we can say power and we can say X and Y. X will be the base number. Y is the power. So it'll say if I go four and two, it means four to the power two. And let's try this in Python. So let's go with this. So let's take a number. So we're gonna go number is equal to two, Point three four five. Let's go six point four five. I can now say, all right, I want to show some answers. Let's go the first answer, seal. Now, when you think of seal, think of the ceiling. The ceiling's on the top, so it's gonna round up. Just like how the floor is at the bottom, so it's gonna round down. So if you ever forget, think when you wanna round up, you're always gonna look up that on the top, there should be a ceiling. So we go, if you notice, it's more letters. Remember, Python is case sensitive. So I go C-E-I-L and I type in what the number is. So I go number, run it. Okay, let me clear off the screen. It's a bit. Uh... All right, run. There we go. 2.64 rounds up to three. We can go with print floor. And I can go number. And this time. It goes three for seal, two for floor. I can now use fun function. I'm going to take a number that we all know. So number two, let's go with number, same number, number is equal to four. I can say print SQRT number. Now what this does, the first time number is 2.64. So it's going to run these two statements with 2.64. But the moment I come after that and say number is four, number is now going to be replaced. It's going to erase the old thing. And it's now going to say square root of number. 
and number is four, so square root of four is two. So you'll notice that the two is 2.0. Why? Because whenever we square root a number, we get a real answer. Right. Next is the power function. So if we look at the power function. I said the first number is your base. So four is the base. The second number is your power. So it's four to the power two. And let's just go and print it straight away so you can all see it. So go four to the power two. That means four squared. We go four squared. Here we go. Four squared is 16. Now, with the math module, there are plenty more maths operators that you can use. All you have to do in order to see the different operators is open up the Python documents and search for math, or you can go online and look at the Python docs and look at the mathematical functions. And you'll see here's the one we did today, seal. There's others over here, there's flux. But we, we're just gonna focus on those few for the time being. Right. Is there any question on the math module? Okay, I'll take the silence and no one chat, type in chat as there's no questions. So we go on to the next part. String manipulation or string handling. This is how we can take a simple string and change it to make it look like what we want to do. For example, if I have a variable or I've created a variable and variable is sentence and I store in sentence the word or the sentence Python is fun. Instead of me just putting it in a PowerPoint presentation and showing you, why don't I just show you? So I'm going to go and I'm going to start the sentence in my file. So I'm going to go sentence is equal to Python is fun. Sorry, I forgot the quotes. Remember the double quotes means text, otherwise Python will look at it as variables. So I go, Python is fun. And now I have my information in a sentence. Now, we can go on to any further onto the string handling part. What you should understand or what you should know now is that this sentence is made up of multiple characters. Characters means letters, symbols, numbers. So if I look at this, each position here is a character. T is in the first position, Y is in the second position, T is in the third position. But when we come to coding, we don't start counting at one. We actually start counting at zero. So when we look at positions, what characters in P is in position zero, the Y is in position one. And if we look carefully, even when there's a space, that's still a character. So that has a position of six. There's another space here, that's position nine. So each character in a sentence is a position. Now, if I look at this, I can refer to each character by referring to its position. So if I go, what is at sentence square bracket zero? The answer will be P. 
What's that sentence square bracket eight? If I go look at position eight, S is there. So that's what will ask you. So if I ask you what's at position 10, you look position 10 is F. And if I do this in Python, it's the exact same thing. So if I go and say, all right, let's see if it works. Sentence. If I wanna see what's a position zero. Sentence. Sorry, let's go print first. What is a position eight? If I run this program now, Python will come back to me and tell me, all right. Okay, that's a whole lot of errors. Let's run it one more time. Python will come back and tell me, in sentence at position zero, I have the letter P. And that's what we said, it'll be there. At position zero, it is P. If I go, what's a position eight? It's S. I can find out positions for each character there. That is what string manipulation starts off with. Of course, we can build on to this manipulation by looking at the different things we can change it to. If you noticed, I typed everything in capital letters. In capital letters, what we talk about is uppercase, right? So if I look at this, my first one is gonna be lowercase manipulation. That means, what if I don't like capital letters? Because we all understand if you type in capital letters at somebody, it means you are screaming at them. So let's change it to make sure that everything is small letters and in Programming, how we do this is by using the lower function. So I can go, all right, let's print the sentence off. But when I'm printing the sentence, I want it to be lowercase. So I say, take the sentence dot and I say, lower it. And I make sure I have my round brackets there. What this will do, it'll take my sentence and it'll convert it to lowercase. So if I run this now, Python is fun, is in lowercase. So that's what Python did. It took it and it converted it to lowercase, my sentence. So the person can type in whatever language, whatever case they want, and I can put it all standardized, make it one even case for myself, all right? Oh, we have a question from Tambeka. So what if you get like six or nine? So what if you get six or nine? If I look at the position, at position six, there's a blank, there's a space. At position nine, there's a space. So if you actually put six and nine here, it's actually just going to display a space. So you won't see anything on the screen. It's going to just be a space there. If I look at it, I'm pulling it down, there you go. If you notice, if I highlight here, you can see that there's one space there, right? So what happens if you have to display the position six or nine? It's going to display the space. Okay, so that's the lower case. Now, of course, I can go and change my sentence and I can go sentence is equal to, and I can now go, okay, P Y T H O N. It's all different cases now. Some people type like that because they think it's fancy, but what, what if you want it standardized again? Since dot upper and sentence dot upper now, will convert everything that, we, that you see here to uppercase. So, or uppercase or capital letters if you don't know what uppercase means. All right, so if I run it, 
There we go. There's that six or six or nine that's there. It's blank still because remember, those were nothing in it. It was just a space. Python is now not in all different cases. It's all in capital letters, all right? The next one. Length. When you type a sentence out, you want to know how long something is. So you want to know how many characters are in that sentence that you use. So if I go sentence again, now remember every time I use sentence is equal to the old information that was in sentence is going to clear out. That means it's going to be erased. And from this point onwards downwards, it's only what the new information that we have there will be shown. So if I go sentence is equal to, and let's put a sentence down. No, just let's just use the first one. Python is fine. And I go, okay, let's print sentence. But this time we will go with length. And you notice again, length is not the full word, it's L E N. So we go L E N. And sentence in the center of it. Now, what this is going to do, it's going to go and say, all right, how many characters do we have in Python is fun? And if we looked at the last one, the last slide we had, the, the number of characters in Python is fun is 12 altogether. Remember, a space is a character. So if I run this, thirteen. Again, we said we got twelve. Python is saying we got thirteen, because remember now, if you count in twelve here, zero is also a number. So one to twelve is one to twelve. If you add zero to it, it's thirteen. So the number of characters will tell us it's 13 characters long. Remember this numbers at the bottom here is what position each character is in. Right. Next, index. Index means what do we want to search for? And how we use it is we say index and inside index, we put down in quotes, What do we want to search for? Do we want to search for, we don't only have to search for letters and how we use it is we simply say, print and I can go sentence because sentence is where we are looking for the information. So I'm looking for the information in sentence and I go dot index. Index means it's time to search. And where are we searching? We're searching in sentence. And now I can go open brackets and say, what do I want to search for? I want to search for the letter Y. And if I look at the letter Y, the letter Y is in the first position. Remember, position starts at zero. So, Okay, let's clear out this. There's so much information. This one. There we go. Python is fun was the first one, then Python in capital letters, and then the length of the sentence is 13. The Y is in position one. Now we don't only have or we don't only have to search for a letter. We can actually search for words. Like I can go, where is the word? Oh, uh, part of the word. Let's go with H O N. You can see it's at the end of Python here. So now if I could go run, run the module, and it'll tell me that's in position three. Now we may be looking for three letters, but it starts at position three. In this case, it just happened to be the same, right? So if I look at this, it's zero, one, two, three. The H is in position three. So it's 
it tells us where the word starts off at. So I can change this to anything. I can go is. I can run that again. This time it'll tell me that's its position seven. But look, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the word is starts at position seven. Now it's case sensitive, same thing with index. If I go look for the word is, but I put small letters, Python's gonna tell me, sorry, cannot find it. And how they do that? By giving us an error. There we go. Trace back, value error, substring not found. Substring not found means the part or the information we're looking for can't be found. So Python's trying to tell us what it means. So the word is doesn't exist in the sentence. Why? Because I spelt it as small is and in the sentence it is capital IS. So case matters, right? Now, this is our string handling. Let's try and put this all together in a program in a program where we can actually answer a question. So let's try an exercise. Whenever you come with exercises, you must be able to look at three things. You must look at, is the processing an output? So if I look at this, Need to minimize some of my information on my screen. All right, so if I look at this now and I read this first question, write a program that will ask the user, that means the person that's using the program, to enter in their full name. So I want the person or the computer, want, or the person that wants me to create this program, wants to enter in only their name or their full name and must be the first name and surname. So this is going to become my input. So this is my input. Then what must happen after they input the person's name, the program must then display a greeting. So I'm displaying a greeting to the user, but this greeting is not any greeting. It's only using the initial of the the first name and the full surname example. So if I, I enter, my name is Brandon and my surname is Govinda, it must say, hello, B Govinda. So if I look at this, this is going to be my output. So this is my output. So what's my processing? My processing is how do I get the name and surname only to display the initial of the name, but it must include the entire surname. Now that's where our string manipulation came in. It's coming, it's going to come in handy because if I look at this, the initial of the person is always gonna be in the first position. And if it's in that first position in programming, we refer to that as position, zero. So let's look at our code. So do we know how to get input? Yes, we're going to get the person's name. So I'm going to go person name and the person's name is going to be input. And I'll go enter in your name. And I'll go, okay, now I need the person's surname. So I go person surname and I go input enter in your surname. And now I need to display the person's initial and full surname. And how we do this is by processing. We need to remove the first letter. So 
I'm going to say, okay, I want the first letter. And the first letter from what? I want the first letter from the person's name. So I go, okay, I want the first letter from the person's name. So I'm going to store the person's name. And I go, it's going to be the first letter. So that's position zero. And I say, okay. I'm going to greet the person with the entire pen. So I go, okay, print. And I go, hello. And I'm going to add on the first letter. And after I add on the first letter, I'm going to leave a space. That's why I'm going to open quotes and I'm going to put a space because remember, a space is also a character. So I'm going to put in a space and I'm going to finally add on the person's surname. And for the person's surname, I don't have to worry. It's in the full surname. So now if I run this program, I, if I look at it, I'm going to get the person's name. I'm going to get the person's surname. I'm going to only remove the first position. So that's position zero, the first letter. And I'm going to add it on. Fine. So if I run it, oh, so much information on the screen. Let me just close it and reopen it. Run again. If I run it, enter the person's name, Brandon. Enter the source name. Governor. Hello, B. Governor. The only difference is in the example, it said over there, dot. So that means instead of just leaving a space, we go back to our program and we put in a dot there. And that would be how we would answer that question. And this question doesn't only work with my name, it can work with any name because we programmed it to enter a person's name into the program. There you go, now it has the dot. Close this, close this. And you'll notice that number two there write a program that will enter in a sentence and display how many characters are in the sentence. So if I display an in, if I input, I like to watch TV here, it must display 19 characters in the sentence. Now we did something similar to that at the string manipulation. It's some, there's a some sort of string manipulation function to tell you how many characters in a sentence. How much is it? It is length. So I want you as your today's homework to do that question, to find how many characters are in a sentence, right? I did say at the start that the videos are uploaded onto teen, sorry, Africa Teen Greeks. Let me just take out the pins and show you where it is. Right. So if I go and open this up. Okay, it's not opening. There we go. So if I click over there, it'll open up and take you to the YouTube page. If you scroll slightly down from the home page, you notice that the lessons are all uploaded here. Yes, yesterday's lessons, it's according to date. And today's lesson will be uploaded when they have some time to put it there. There's, I'll paste this link in chat so that you can actually take it down from there. Copy, paste. For the Python programs that I've actually done with y'all yesterday and today, 
I'll give you the link to that file as well so that you can actually use it. Let me just copy it. Paste it. That's where you can find all the files. So when you open up that link, it should take you to a page like this. All right, this is the OneDrive. And he has all the lessons from, or all the Python files from yesterday. And today's Python files will be uploaded in this one folder. So you can download it and look at it and practice with it. Thank you so much for attending today. If there's any questions, please be free to ask now. No questions. All right, then I wish you all a good day and stay safe. I'll see you all tomorrow.